Hello, it's Mr. O'Mara here. I thought I'd talk to you and recap a little bit of what we did today about sentences. Now, there are four types of sentences, but we're going to start with the most basic, which is the simple sentence. Now, there are all kinds of ways you can remember what a sentence is. One way that appears a lot in textbooks is a completed action. Now, I think that's a bit too abstract, so I want to get down to something a bit more, sort of, uh, clearer. A sentence must have a subject, which is what it's about, somebody doing an action, and a predicate, which is that completed action. As native English speakers, we have quite a good intuitive sense of this, but I want to go into it in more detail than that. Let's start with the quick brown fox. Now, you would probably recognise that this needs a capital letter at the start, and it needs punctuation at the end. It might have a full stop, it might have an exclamation point, it might have a question mark, or it might have an ellipsis. These are the four ways that you can end a sentence. These are the four valid types of terminal punctuation. But even with the punctuation correct, you still don't have a valid sentence. Because the quick brown fox is in fact not doing anything. It's just a subject. So it's all subject and no predicate. So the next question is, what is a predicate? Ran down the road we have. Now, ran down the road's a predicate, but we've got no subject. Who ran down the road? We don't know. So, this is all action, no subject. So, while this has a capital at the start, and it has terminal punctuation at the end, it is still not a valid sentence. We actually require both. Which brings us to our next sentence. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. By the way, you'll notice that it's both quick and brown, so it's got a comma in between. So, we've got our punctuations in place. Now, we say, who is this about? In English, we generally put who it's about, the subject, at the start of the sentence. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have a bit of information before, but in this case, it is about the quick brown fox. What did it do? It jumped over the lazy dog. So that's the predicate, and the subject is the quick brown fox. It's not just fox, it's the quick brown fox. All of that. Because if it's not predicate, then it's subject. Everything in the sentence is one thing or the other. And this is how we tell that it's a valid sentence. So, another example to have a quick look at. The man from next door borrowed my axe and did not return it. Now, the key verb here is borrowed. So, what we can say is, who borrowed? The man from next door borrowed. It's not just the man, because he didn't from next door. Like, that's not an action. That's just part of who he is. He is the man from next door. And he borrowed my axe and did not return it. So, that's the predicate. So, we have a complete valid sentence. Next up, we have something that's a bit tricky, and I noticed through some people today. It rained on, and that should be my car. There you go, everybody makes mistakes, and I didn't make that on purpose, but there you have it. It rained on my car. Now, some people went, well, the obvious noun in there is car, but the car's actually not doing anything. The, you look to the start of the sentence, or more to the point, you say, rained is the verb. Who rained? Well, it rained. And in English, we use it to kind of mean the universe sometimes. You know, it is not a good day. It rained. It's a shame. So, it can be a subject, even if it's a very vague subject. So, it rained on my car. This is, there is your um, subject. What did it do? It rained on my car. Let's have a look, look at another one. I'll give you a second to see if you can work out what the subject is here. When I say a minute, I actually meant a couple of seconds. We look for the verb, watched. Who watched? Well, Alfred watched. Is what he did, the elephant watched a bit of telly before bedtime? Well, obviously it isn't. It's Alfred the elephant who did that, and he watched a bit of telly before bedtime. So, this is our subject. This is our predicate down here. What we should be able to do is, if we take out our subject, we should be able to replace it with he, she, or it. So, if I can take out Alfred and just change it with he, and the sentence still works, then that was my subject. So, he watched a bit of telly before bedtime. So, I picked well. Now, let's say I get it wrong, and I just go, oh, it's just Alfred. So, he, the elephant, watched a bit of telly before bedtime. I have broken this sentence, so I was looking at the wrong thing. So, my subject is Alfred, the elephant, and my predicate is watched a bit of telly before bedtime. That's all I've got time for, but I hope that helps.